opening him 695, can a little child like me. Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to 17. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and laid down. He dreamed there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. The Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God Almighty, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you, and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it 
and was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm number 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look, at, look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from you, from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. Our second lesson is uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 to 5 and 9 to 10. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice, all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants long for pure spiritual milk, so by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices accepted to God through Jesus Christ. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people, once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel hymn 209, Hark my soul, it is the Lord. Hark my soul, it is the Lord. Tis thy Savior, hear his word. Jesus speaks and speaks to thee. Say, poor sinner, longs thou me? I delivered thee when bound, and when bleeding healed thy wound. Sought thee wandering, set thee right, turn thy darkness in. Yeah. 
Jesus to pick one of the Ten Commandments? If so, which one? Which commandment do you consider to be the greatest commandment? Not just one of the Ten Commandments, but also such commandments as to forgive others before we ask for forgiveness taught to us in the Lord's Prayer. Or the commandment to receive the blessed body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist when our Lord says, this is my body, this is my blood. Do this often in remembrance of me. Through today's gospel reading, Jesus clearly tells us that we have a responsibility to love God and to love one another. A true and genuine responsibility to love God and to love all humankind which has been created in his image. A genuine responsibility to love our neighbors in the same manner as we love God or in the same way we love ourselves. The Greek language uses four different words for love. One of those is agape, which is an unconditional, self-sacrificing love. It's a word used to describe our love for God, the love we have for our country, for our family and friends. It is a love which involves a commitment it is the only kind of love that makes sense if you love your neighbor as yourself. If we were to practice this kind of love all the time, the world would be a much different place to live in. There would be no hunger or thirst because food and clean water would be shared. There would be no war because we would not do unto others what we do not want done unto ourselves. There would be no homeless. No one without proper medical care. No one without adequate clothing. Can you imagine everyday life in a world which practiced first and foremost loving God and loving our neighbors? No negative stories or fake news. All elected persons cooperating on what is best for everyone, including the poor and the homeless. Politicians genuinely concerned about the welfare of others. Companies and manufacturers producing the best possible product and selling it for a fair price to make a living. Not trying to become rich off things which others need to live and survive. 
Unfortunately, we do not live in that type of world today. For the most part, we live in a world consumed with greed and selfishness, and often a genuine lack of concern for others. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13, St. Paul says, And now abides faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these three is love. Love is at the center of our Lord's saying in Luke 6, 31, Do unto others as we would have them do to us. In Luke 6, 35, our Lord says, Love your enemies and do good to them. In Romans 12, 9, Paul says, Love must be sincere. And in 13, 10, he says, Love does no harm to a neighbor. And who is our neighbor? As we learn in the parable of the Good Samaritan, our neighbor is everyone. So let each of us in our daily lives remember that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Hymn 59, Blessed Assurance.
and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy government to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn, hymn number 22, All the Way My Savior Leads. Blessing.